fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Hey gang, welcome back to Talking the Orville, your number one hub for all things going on in the 25th century. Domino. Domino. Domino! Playing dominoes on the porch, no drive-by. The latest episode of the Orville, Domino, episode 3.9. Just one more episode of this season left, you guys. Just one. And so far with New Horizons, the Orville has gotten bigger and better with every new episode. Every new episode outdoes the previous episode, and the previous episodes are amazing. And they keep doing it, meaning that the upcoming episode, Future Unknown, which an unknown Orville future is a big deal to us because we want to know the future. We want to know that we are getting more. Hashtag renew the Orville. And if this latest episode does not convince you that the Orville will be renewed for a fourth season, uh, you are living in La La Land. Now, I know there's going to be people in the comments going, Oh, no, it's over. Uh, I heard from a, a, a dude uh, that knows things. I know things. This thing is up for re renewal. You noticed the last few weeks, something that he was not willing to do before. Seth is now uh, entertaining the idea of, oh, what if we did more? I wanna, I, I'd want to. i like to explore this, I'd like to do that. Uh, the episode that we weren't able to film for New Horizons, Sympathy for the Devil, available now. Click it, the link down below. Get it for free off of Audible, narrated by Bruce Boxleitner himself. An absolutely amazing story. Seth is now like, hey, I kinda wanna film that episode that we weren't able to film for season four. He's only saying that, in my opinion, because there is hope for a fourth season, despite what the naysayers say because they were force-fed a bunch of garbage from garbage YouTube channels. You know, channels I'm talking about. Negativity mongers, you guys. But Domino, there's no negativity, just love. And oh, so many things happen. The pew-pews, the explosions were the biggest that have ever been done on any television series ever in the history of a story box, you guys. My goodness, no one has ever done anything this big, this huge, this edge of your seat, this captivating ever. So whatever, whatever uh, sci-fi shows that you love, just know it's not as good as the Orville. That is not my opinion, that is just a fact. Hashtag renew the Orville. Uh, we got uh, what we thought might be happening as since last week. Uh, the Krill, who are dicks, have allied themselves with the Mocklins, who are dicks. And together, they have uh, created a super dick baby called the Mock Krill. That's my name for them. You can have that. You can use it. Um, I'm, I'm letting everybody have that. The Mock Krill. And man, uh, we we know the krill are, are are jerks, right? We we know the way they think. We know we know they think they're better than everybody else, and everyone else is just an animal, stupid Avis. And then the Mocklins, who we know are savage, we know are liars, and it also turns out they're a bunch of hypocrites, bowing down before a female. Talia had them wrapped right around her finger. I'm not too threatened by them. We got Talia. Uh, Mocklins are a bunch of dum dums. They got explosions, but they don't have any pew pews in their brains. So I'm not too worried about them. Uh, we're wrapping up a bunch of stuff from all three seasons in New Horizons. Seth did go in with this season when he started creating it and writing it with the, the idea of, oh, if this is the last season, I want to wrap up uh, all these storylines we've been creating over the seasons, which means we now have the opportunity to create all new storylines for the continuing seasons for season four season five season six season 28 wait until you see what gordon's up to then charlie oh what a journey charlie had you guys uh she sacrificed herself we know where she came from at the beginning of the season hating kalons hating isaac and then as as the story progressed i mean she said okay i'll work with isaac because that's my damn job 
Uh, I'll leave the rest uh, at the door when I walk into work. But then she got to know Isaac a little bit. She started seeing through the eyes of a Kalon. Uh, using that thing uh, humans have called empathy. Not trusting Kalons, but she's starting, beginning to trust Isaac a little bit, becoming friendlier. Uh, thanks to K, to no, not K1, to Timis, she got to see through the eyes of the Kalon. And then uh, by this episode, Domino, she's like, We trust Isaac. We don't trust you guys. Isaac is awesome. You guys suck. That's Charlie going to bat for Isaac. But she taught the Kalon a lesson. She essentially saved all sentient life in the galaxy when she sacrificed herself for the greater good. The Kalons did not understand that. It had to be explained. And now they're like, oh, humans aren't so bad. And now the Kalon are on our side. We no longer have the threat of the Kalon, which is great to me because I have always loved the Kalon. I, I, I know they were a huge threat, but their whole story, their point of view, I absolutely loved it. So much potential there. And now we're going to be going forward with that. An entire planet of AI uh, uh, sentient beings uh, wanting to learn how to be human or how to understand humans. Just like Isaac's original, even though it wasn't originally the case. Isaac was a plant, a, a spy by the Kalon originally, trying to figure out uh, how humans are. Should they be saved? Should they be destroyed? Uh, now uh, they all get to go on that journey, the same journey that Isaac went on by working together with humanoid creatures, humanoid beings, the union. Uh, humanoid is basically humans in sci-fi. Uh, they represent us. I am just absolutely blown away. I'm reading comments online People are saying this is the best thing they have ever seen. This is the uh, such an important episode. This episode is going to win all the awards. I guarantee you this is a winning episode when it comes to all the accolades that are given out to shows and movies and uh, plays. <laughs> I am so happy that Clyden is back. We got Clyden back last week, but now he's back. He's part of the Orville. He's part of the team, and he is back to being Bordas's mate which is what we loved about Clyden before we found out he was a big, huge doucher. The funny stuff about Bordas doesn't work as much without Clyden there uh, for him to bounce it off of. The whole walnut scene just <laughs> was so great. It was one of those classic little Orville moments. And those little Orville moments are usually between Clyden and Bordas fighting over something super simple. In this case, it's just Bordas trying to open up walnuts and uh, Clyden berating him every time he <laughs> doesn't get uh, a walnut open and they can't enjoy that beautiful, juicy, tasty meat held within the shell. This episode just brings up so much stuff. Uh, this season has definitely been about, I've said this before, coexistence. Seth has said this as well. We have finally learned and taught the Kalon that we can coexist. It is not futile. And now uh, going forward, I don't know if we're going to get it for the upcoming season finale, but going forward into the next season, I believe that is going to be something that we're going to have to teach the Krill and the Mothlins, assuming they don't destroy themselves trying to destroy the Union. Because not only are they about their ideologies, they are about vengeance. They've all had their asses handed to them, and they want revenge on the Union for that, for questioning uh, their ideals and their ways of life, which kind of suck. Except for Krills do have st awesome strippers. I don't know what the Mocklins are, but I probably wouldn't be as interested in Mocklin strippers as I would in Krill strippers. Uh, also, Planetary Union, you gotta up your stripper game. What's going on over there? Admiral Ted Danson, Admiral Perry. We lost Charlie in this episode, but the loss of Ted Danson is also very sad. We hardly knew Admiral Perry. He was working for the greater good in his mind. He thought the Kalon is a huge threat. We have to wipe them out before they wipe us out. And he was willing to betray the Union in order to make that happen. But he still, uh, uh, he was still an ally. He was still true to the Union by planning on going back and turning himself in for betraying something that he absolutely, completely believes in. Uh, truth, justice, and the Union way. But of course, you know, Krill being Krill, Mocklins being Mocklins. He got exploded. So sad. Oh, Ted Danson. I love you so much, buddy. John and Gordon 
fighting side by side in the pterodons. How about those pterodons, you guys? We finally got to see them in action, and action they are able to provide. Uh, designed by Brandon Fayette of the Orville uh, VFX team. I'm sure he was very sad to have to destroy some of those pterodons in his uh, in his uh, computer bay or whatever they call it for effects teams, his effects bay. But wow, the whole planet imploding. Now, I don't think that was Machless. That was probably some other station on another planet, uh, kind of like the Epsilon 2 of Machless. Uh, but wow, that thing got exploded so damn hard. The action it was so high. I've never seen action this high. Uh, definitely not on a TV show, barely in movies. I was at the edge of my seat. Uh, it just kept going and going. Anytime there's a problem, oh, we got to add some more action here. When, when the shuttle was, uh, they needed to get out of there, uh, out of the crossfire, they said, heck, let's get the EV suits on and jump out of this. And wow, that was a new thing that we learned, that if you have an EV suit on, you don't need a parachute. You can just jump right out and, and that thing will help you land uh, unharmed. The full weapon that, that can destroy, not only take out Kalon, take them out all the way completely the union was holding all the cards with that device that was created by charlie and isaac oh wow and the the, the explosions when the, the Orville's like hey man be cool or we're gonna explode you guys they were taking out five or six uh kalon spheres at a time just the one ship and kalon's like whoa all right we'll talk i am just blown away by this episode are you blown away by this episode we're going to talk about it live uh, uh in just a couple days here i want to hear what you guys got to say you never know who might show up to one of our live shows as well i got some uh interviews lined up i'm working on uh chatting with ann winters hopefully that works out we'll be talking to brandon fayette who who made all the pew pew explode in uh this season all the seasons and i'm also going to be talking uh this uh, next week hopefully to tommy tran who also makes things explode for the Orville. We got lots going on. Click on the things, the notification, the the, the subscribe, the, the support links that are all down there. Get you a free copy on Audible of the Orville Sympathy for the Devil. That episode is going to blow you away. It's like nothing else the Orville has ever done. Very sad we didn't get the full episode this season, but Seth is hopeful for filming that episode next season. What could they possibly do next week after uh, what happened in the season this week. And the whole series this week. This sums everything up. We are now at peace with the Kalon. Uh, we got uh, we got Talia in jail. Uh, Mocklins are, do are dopes. What are we going to do, you guys? What's the Orville going to give us next week? Well, we're going to be talking about all of it together. The best fandom that's ever existed. Uh, Gene Rodden who? Who's that guy? Never heard of him. Seth MacFarlane, my friends. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Remember, we all do better when we all do better. Love you. Bye-bye. Her existence was brief. But, much like the first domino in a succession, her impact will be felt far into the future.